Can you tell us about uh, why the history of the billion dollar or trillion dollar industry? I'm not sure. Flavor house industry. Um, the public is unaware of. Yeah. So processed food industry, looking at everything, trillion dollars. The flavor houses are these chemical labs that work for the processed food industry. They're the chemists. I mean, did you know that, that there are like chemists working in food industry? They're like called food chemists. Their job is to find chemicals that will mimic kind of the real flavors in real food that you're going to cook up for yourself in your house, right? I met and interviewed and spent time with people who invented that thing called pumpkin pie spice, right? That scourge that comes along in September, October every year. Now it's like in dozens of products all over the grocery store. Well, that's invented by chemists in these what they call flavor labs using as many as 80, eight zero chemical components to mimic the flavor of like real pumpkin pie spice, which is like cinnamon and cloves and, and <clears throat> ginger or what have you. So, but the thing that really surprised me when I spent time with them is that the main job that they do for the processed food industry is in mixing their new formulas for their products is to work to reduce the cost of those products because they know that's one of those in deep instinctual things that attract us to food. They know that when we walk in the store and that box of like breakfast toaster pastries costs 15 cents less this week than it did last week, down deep in our brains, we're gonna get super excited about that. Because again, in our previous existence, our forebears, less cost meant less energy expenditure, right? It's why when we were in hunter-gatherer societies, we learned that it made a lot more sense instead of trying to run down an antelope for dinner, just pick up that poor aardvark sitting there and you're gonna get as much calories and protein, but with less energy expenditure, right? So it's down deep in our, it's down deep in our brain. And, and that, that's why these flavor houses are working so hard to find chemicals that are even cheaper than the formulation that they had last week. But who governs or who looks at the work of the flavor houses to see that these things aren't negatively impactful on human beings. What are you saying? I mean, that's the problem here is that these companies, you know, are more powerful in many ways than the government regulators who are supposed to be there looking over their shoulders on our behalf, right? The Department of Agriculture plays a huge role in food, farming, nutrition. But when you look at their budget, <clears throat> 99.999 XX percent of their budget, the money that they spend is spent promoting processed food. And the rest of it is spent helping us control our dependency on processed food through nutritional advice, right? That you sometimes see in public service ads or what have you. So yeah, the government's not there to help us. These companies have a free reign and not only that, but they have lobbyists working for them that will convince those government people, regulators, to look the other way. And speaking of government, can you explain how the government linked up with corporations to make cheese so famous? <laughs> so this is a bit of a long story, but back in the 80s, the government was helping dairy farmers out <laughs> by buying all the surplus milk. And they couldn't buy enough surplus milk and store it. So they started making processed cheese out of their milk. And believe it or not, the government, us taxpayers, were storing gazillions of pounds of processed cheese in caves in Missouri because it was naturally cool down there. Secretary of Agriculture came along and discovered that. He goes, this is crazy. Why are we just, this cheese is like going moldy. Can't we do something else? And that's where the government came up with this idea. Well. Why should we store it? Why don't we just get people to eat more cheese? And that's when you saw the beginning of these government programs where they shipped truckloads of processed cheese to poor people in schools as free, part of the free school food program. That's also where you saw the government kind of hook up with pizza chains 
to get them to use more cheese in pizza. So now you have pizzas where there's like two cheeses inside the crust, five cheeses on top of the crust. That's all because of this linkage between the government and the processed food industry in getting us to like buy more stuff, eat more stuff without without thinking or caring about the health consequence of, of that kind of a diet. I know it's categorized as cheese, but how much cheese is actually in the cheese that they provide to uh, that they provide it for school lunches and government? Programs? Well, it depends on the product. So if you look at a package, you often see a euphemism for cheese. They, they call it. That's the one thing the government does. They don't let them call it cheese if it's not really cheese. And so they'll put things like cheese product. I can't even think of it. There's like 10 different names that sound like cheese, but aren't really cheese. But I'll tell you a funny story. So I was writing about Kraft and this product called Cheese Whiz. Remember that? It's a spread that you, yeah, kind of lose some crackers and stuff. Well, <clears throat> I was interviewing one of the inventors of Cheese Whiz. He's retired down in Florida now. And he goes, well, you know, it's really interesting, Michael, but I went out to buy some cheese whiz because I love it. It's, you know, we have it here. We're simple people. It's a nice evening hors d'oeuvre we have with a martini. I bought some home once and I opened up and tasted it. And I go, this doesn't taste like the cheese whiz. I know this tastes like axle grease. And he even called the consumer complaint line of his former company, Kraft, complaining about it. And so I looked into it and he goes like, what did they do here? Well, what they did was they reduced the amount of real cheese in it and replaced it with some kind of oil component that actually isn't cheese in order to reduce the cost. And by the way, you can probably guess what helps with that flavor problem in the cheese less cheese with more salt, right? In fact, processed cheese generally has, has at least a little bit more salt than kind of regular cheese because it kind of needs it for the, at, at least for the industrial process making of it, if not, if, not the, if not the flavor. Who hired the public relations team? Was it the government mm. or private companies to spread this message of cheese? Yeah, probably, probably most of the PR work, the marketing, was by the companies. In fact, they got the dairy farmers to contribute to a fund to pay for the marketing. What the government did was <clears throat> said, hey, okay, you do that, but we're going to oversee this whole process to make sure it's you know legit and nobody gets cheated. So what you have is that the Department of Agriculture oversees and audits the marketing that the companies do themselves and it kind of blends together but it's industry money and they're tapping those dairy farmers.